Hello everyone! Welcome to another session of Feast at Home. Kamusta kayo? January 31 na, isang buwan na ang natapos ngayong 2021. Akalain nyo yun, napakabilis lang ng panahon. No? But we still look forward to the upcoming 11 months of this year and we know that the Lord will is just going to get it. Things just go things are just going to get better and better and better because that's the kind of God that we have. We have a God who loves to outdo himself. And alam nyo, kamustahin ko lang kayo. Ha? Kamusta kayo? How's your first month of the year? I hope you are doing great. And as you all know, we are still in our series Rhythms of Grace. Find rest in a God of love. And talk for that's what we're going to discuss today is entitled The Lord that saves. Ayan. And we are still in the Gospel of Matthew. And we are in this part that shows the different responses to Jesus. From totally positive to the totally negative. Eh, para bagang si Matthew sinasabi. It, he was asking all the readers, including us. It, he was asking, how about you? How are you going to respond to Jesus? And today, I'd like to preach the powerful message this. God loves broken people. And ngayong araw na ito, gusto ko sanang pag-usapan ang ating mga brokenness. And before I deal with that and dive deeper into that, let's, let me ask you first in this question. And meron lang akong request sa inyo. I want you to type your answers in the comment section kasi feeling ko yung answers ninyo, yung comments ninyo will greatly help many, many viewers, especially right now. Ito ang tanong ko sa inyo. Alam ko, lahat tayo, we have experienced sadness, we have experienced brokenness, we have experienced anxiety, or maybe even depression. Some of us have experienced that. Ang tanong ko sa inyo to, how do you deal with your own brokenness? How do you deal with sadness? How do you cope up? And I want you to comment your answers down below kasi malamang makakatulong ito sa maraming tao kasi... Ako, meron akong style ng pagko-cope up. Yung iba, meron din. So, baka lang, we can get some clues and hints and tips from one another. Can we do that? And while you are typing in your answer, let me share to you how I deal with sadness and how do I cope with it. So, una sa lahat, kakain ako. Debiro lang, pero kasama yun talaga. A- ako, whenever I experience sadness or anxiety or a- 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 some bouts of de- depression, Immediately, I press the pause button. Titigil ako, I need to step back. And kasi minsan overwhelming eh. Lahat ng mga nangyayari kung bakit ka nalulungkot. And then when I pause, here's what I do. I immediately go into prayer. I seek the Lord. I seek God's voice more than me ranting to the Lord. Because I believe in those moments of uncertainties, in those moments of sadness, there God can actually speak. And during my prayer, I just asked the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, how do you calm my heart? And yun, tatanungin ko lang siya. And then, as I speak, as I wait in silence, the Lord slowly is impressing His voice, His, His message upon my heart. And usually, I rely on His word. When I read the word, ayan na. Malalaman mo na kung ano yung totoong sinasabi ng Diyos para sa buhay mo. Kasi minsan, kapag nalulungkot ka, ang dami mong negative na sinasabi sa sarili mo. That's why we need to go to the Word of God. We need to go to God in order for us to hear what He thinks about us, what He thinks about you. And then last but not the least, ito, I go to people. So pause, prayer, and then people. I, I share it to another friend. I share it to my wife kung ano yung pinagdaraanan ko. E minsan, kahit hindi sila mag-advice, the mere fact na merong nakikinig at alam mong merong nakaagapay sa'yo, solve na ako. Somehow, the sadness withers away. How about you? One of the most common denominators on how we cope up with sadness is going back to God. Listening, listening to worship songs, prayer. Because indeed, our God is our joy. Our God is our real rest. So, kung meron kang konting lungkot sa puso mo, sa akin, wag mo nang hanapin, wag mo nang dalin sa kung saan-saan. Bumalik ka kay Lord and let God take away all your tears, wipe away all your tears, take away all the sadness in your heart. Ayan po. So, 
Patikim pa lang po yan sa ating pag-uusapan ngayong araw na ito. We are going to talk about brokenness. And today, I'm excited to start our talk entitled, A Lord, The Lord That Saves. And again, my one big message is God loves broken people. And if you are broken, you are in the right place. You are in the right Facebook page and you are in the right YouTube channel because I believe the Lord will speak to you today. Amen? Before we jump in the, and dive deeper into the Word of God, let's pray our favorite first here at the feast. Together, let's make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, pray this with me. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved, I am God's servant, I am God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's honor God's Word. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let me read our word for today. It's coming from Matthew chapter 12, verses 15 to 24. Let's begin reading it. It's entitled, Jesus, God's Chosen Servant. But Jesus knew what they were planning, talking about the Pharisees. So he left that area and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them, but he warned them not to reveal who he was. This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him, which says, Look at my servant whom I have chosen. He is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be the hope of all the world. And then, it says here, the second title of the continuation is Jesus and the Prince of Demons. It says here, Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, Could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, No wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. You see, we, had we have just read a beautiful word from the Lord, but before I dive deeper into our key passage, let me tell you first a story. This is the story of two friends, two boys, Mark and Teddy. You see, Mark was 14 years old. And then one day, while Mark was walking from his school, meron siyang nakitang isa pang bata, isa pang teenager. And his name is Teddy. Naglalakad sa harapan niya. Naki napansin nito ni Mark that Teddy was wearing the same uniform so alam kaagad ni Mark na nag-aaral siya sa parehas na school kung saan siya nag-aaral and so nung nakita niya si Teddy naglalakad di ba? Mark noticed that Teddy was carrying a lot of books a lot of bas a lot of stuff merong libro merong basketball yung jacket niya at kung ano-ano pa ang dami niyang bitbit habang naglalakad sila ito na all of a sudden, natisod at nadapa si Teddy. At biglang nagkalat lahat ng mga libro, lahat ng gamit niya dun sa saeg. Ngayon, dahil mabuting tayo ito si Mark, si Mark agad-agad tumakbo para tulungan si Teddy. Dinampot yung gamit, tapos ibinigay kay Teddy. And then habang tinutulungan niya, nadiskubre ni Mark na magkalapit lang pala sila ng bahay ni Teddy. So sabi ni Mark kay Teddy, uh, Teddy, sige, Total malapit lang naman bahay ko sa inyo. Tulungan na kitang buhatin yung gamit mo. Ihatid na kita sa inyo. So naglakad sila hanggang sa nakarating sila sa bahay ni Teddy. Pagdating sa bahay ni Teddy, ang nanay niya, pinaghanda sila ng merienda, pinakain si Mark, and then after eating, 
naglaro sila ng video games. Ayan, ang saya-saya nila nung araw na yon. And you know what? Since that day, Mark and Teddy became good friends at school. Now, here's what happened. After three years, eto na, 14 years old sila nun. Mag-17 na, anong 70 years, years old na sila, gagraduate na sila from high school. At bago yung araw ng kanilang high school graduation, lumapit ito si Teddy kay Mark at sabi kay Mark, Mark, naalala mo nung una tayong nagkakilala? Natawa ngayon ito si Mark, sabi niya. Oo naman, nadapa ka pa nga nun eh. Sabay sumabog lahat ng gamit mo dun sa kalye. Tapos tinulungan kita. Naalala mo yun, tapos naglaro tayo ng video games pag uwi sa bahay ninyo. Sabi ni Teddy ito. Pakinggan nyo, sabi niya. Alam mo Mark, first time ko lang sasabihin sa'yo to. Alam mo ba, nung araw na yon, gulong-gulo ako sa buhay ko. In fact, gusto ko na mag-suicide nun. Kung di mo nga naitatanong na plano ko na ang lahat, plano ko nun, pag-uwi ko, lalaklaking ko lahat ng sleeping pills ng mami ko, at lahat ng gamot sa bahay namin. At alam mo ba kung bakit ang dami kong dala nung araw na yon? Sabi ni Mark, bakit? Kaya ang dami kong dalang gamit nung araw na yon, sabi ni Teddy, kasi naisip ko, ayokong umalis dito sa mundo na ito, ayokong pagalis ko dito, marami kong iiwan na gulo. At ayokong iintindihin na ng mami ko. Kaya sabi ko, iuwi ko na lang lahat ng gamit sa locker ko para wala nang iisipin yung nanay ko. And at this moment, natigil ng bahagya si Teddy. He breathed heavily and then he was holding back his tears. Malapit na siyang maiyak. And then sabi ni Teddy, Pero alam mo Mark, dumating ka bigla. Tinulungan mo ako, tinulungan mo ako pulutin yung gamit ko, tapos sinamahan mo ako pa uwi. And you know what Mark, sabi niya, because of you, I changed my plans. I realized that life wasn't hopeless. So Mark, thank you. Kasi hindi ako siguro makakagraduate ng high school tomorrow kung hindi dahil sa iyo. My dear friends, this is such a heartwarming story, but let me share to you three lessons from the story. First is this. First is that people are hurting. Alam nyo, the greatest pandemic in this world is not COVID-19, hindi po. The greatest pandemic is the pandemic of brokenness. People around us are broken. Kailangan mo lang buksan ang mga mata mo and you will see them. Amen? People are hurting. Second is this. You need to make their suffering your own. You know what, brothers and sisters? This is the message of Jesus. This is the meaning of the cross. Because the world around us is teaching us that life is all about me, 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 me. Kaya nga siguro nagkakandaloko-loko ang mundo. That's why Jesus is asking us to take on the cross of others so that our life is not just about me, me, me. Instead, instead, maging it's all about you, you, and others. Because I believe, and Jesus believes this, that the only solution to the world's brokenness is a Jesus-led revolution of selflessness. It's all about selflessness. Kapag ka nagtutulungan tayo, doon magiging mas maganda ang ating mundo. Amen? And third lesson that we can get from this is this. Small gestures can heal. Yes, yung ngiti mo, a helping hand, a listening ear, a prayer, a share right now on your Facebook wall. Kasi hindi nyo alam, baka mamaya merong nangangailangan ng salita ng Diyos. Maybe somebody needs to hear this talk. And that share button, that tag button, your comment, it means a lot to many people. Small gestures can heal. Sabi nga ni Mother Teresa, You may not be able to do great things, but you can do small things with great love. And you see, my dear friends, starting today, what is that small gesture that you can do so that you can heal the broken around you? And consequently, I would also like you to take notice of the small gestures that other people are doing for you so that in a, in a in their own little ways your 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 day is made okay your your sadness is uplifted 
maging sensitive sana tayo sa ginagawa ng asawa natin, ng anak natin, ng nanay, ng tatay, ng mga katrabaho mo, ng mga strangers sa kalye. Because small gestures can heal. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all broken. But I'd like to remind you of this. God loves broken people and you should love them too. Amen? Can I invite you to prayer? Close your eyes, bow down your heads, put your hands over your chest and say this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for the cross. You saw how broken we are. That's why you went down from heaven to save us. And through the cross, you willingly shared our pain and brokenness. I pray that as you heal my brokenness, I may be able to see the pain of others. And may I be able to heal their brokenness as well. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thank you, Jesus. Let's be blessed today. Amen. Amen. God loves broken people. Alam nyo, katulad nga ng sinabi ni Mother Teresa, in order for us to in order for us to bless the world, you don't need to do big things. You just need to do small things. And alam nyo, if there's one thing that you can do so that you can heal the world and heal the brokenness of others, it's through your generosity. And you know what? Because of your generosity, we are able to do this life-giving and, and life-changing talks and feasts at home. At lahat po yan ay dahil sa inyong pagbibigay. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you who has been continuously giving to the feast, through, through, to, to the work of the Lord. And because of you, we are able to do what we are doing here at the feast. Alam nyo, yung iba, sinasabi, eh brother, kasi nakakahiya, hindi naman ako malaki magbigay. No, 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 it's okay. It does not have to be big. But please, whenever you give, give with big love in your hearts because that's what the Lord sees. And alam nyo, why, are, why is God encouraging us to give? Why is God encouraging us to be generous? Alam nyo, since we are talking about sadness and brokenness, I believe the best way to cope up with sadness is through giving. Alam nyo, the happiest people are generous people. Think about this. Kailan ka huling tumulong? Kailan ka huling nagbigay? Alam nyo, sa moment na nagbigay ka, actually, hindi ka pwedeng malungkot kapag nagbibigay ka. Kasi the moment na nagbigay ka, you are automatically being made aware that you are blessed. The fact na nakapagbigay ka nga, ibig sabihin, alam mo at klaro sa isip mo na meron ka, na hindi ka kawawa kasi nga nakatulong ka pa at nakapagbigay ka pa. Sa iba. That's why I encourage you to give right now, my dear friends. And here at the feast, we are giving you a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways wherein you can give. And for example, you can give through credit card or via PayPal, and it's flash right now on your screen. There are so many ways to give. You can go at feastalabang.com slash give. You can give through credit card or PayPal. And again, you can also give through BDO. And here are the details below. If a flash po natin yan sa screen, ayan po. And you can also give through East West Bank. We also have a bank account there. You can wire transfer it. You can, uh, meron pong online. Pwede rin naman po, che, uh, pwede rin pong Gcash. Ayan. If meron kayong Gcash, pwede po kayong magbigay Gcash. And if you happen to be giving a huge amount, you want to write a check, please send us a message. Huwag po kayo mag Halimbawa, gusto nyo mag-donate ng 50,000 at, at lampas po sa inyong, lampas po sa transfer limit ng inyong banko, 50,000 or more. You can send us a message sa Facebookutan page and then we can get in touch with you there. You can write a check and then we are going to pick it up in your house. We can do that as well. Because here at the feast, we value your giving and know that your giving is blessing a lot of people. By the way, I would also like to thank all the members of the I Give Club. Alam nyo po yung mga members ng I Give Club natin. 
they are people who are giving extra 1,000 pesos on top of their usual monthly giving. And alam nyo po, because of the your generosity sa I Give Club, we are able to support our parish, our Most Holy Ro Rosary Parish dun po sa Bikutan. We are able also to support and give donations to Anawim, our home for the abandoned elderly. Lahat po yan, it's because of your generosity. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Amen? Now, I want us to dive deeper into our key Bible story. Let's begin. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. Now, I want you to imagine a painting. A painting. Tapos, i-divide nyo yan sa gitna. Divided length twice. And in the text that we have just read, merong ginagawa si Matthew. Matthew was painting the Pharisees on one side and painting Jesus on the other side of the painting. Gusto kasi ipakita ni Matthew yung malaking pagkakaiba ni Jesus at nung mga pariseyo. And if you are familiar with our talk last week, kung kasama nyo kami last week, our Bible verse and story for today actually picks up from last week. And alam nyo yung nangyari last week, di ba? Jesus and His disciples, um, they healed the man with a withered hand on a Sabbath. And because of this, the Pharisees were threatened. The Pharisees were, were triggered. In fact, the Pharisees were plotting to kill Jesus. Gusto nilang patayin si Jesus. At ito yung kasunod. Ito na yung binasa natin kanina. So, alam na ni Jesus na may planong patayin siya ng mga pariseyo. And so, here's what happened. Matthew 12, 15 to 16. But Jesus knew what they were planning. So he left the, that area and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them, but he warned them not to reveal who he was. Ayan. Ang tanong ito, bakit umalis si Jesus dun sa area? And why did he tell them, those whom he healed, not to post the healing on Facebook? In other words, you know what I mean. But ayaw ni Lord na ipagkalat na mga tao na ito. Some are saying, uh, kasi si Jesus, humble siya. He's really, he has a heart for humility. Well, that's a given. But aside from the fact that Jesus has a humble heart, ayaw ni Jesus na kumalat ang balita tungkol sa kanya. Kasi kapag, kapag kumalat yung balita sa, tungkol sa mga pinagagagawa niya, baka mapabilis yung pagkamatay niya. Bakit? Because during this point, mainit na siya sa mga mata ng mga Pharisees. At kapag lalo pa siyang sumikat, baka mapaaga yung crucifixion niya. And Jesus knew this. He still had some things to do before his death. Bago siya mamatay, ang dami pang pinapagawa sa kanya ng Diyos. So, that's what he did. He avoided heating up the conflict and walked away. Ang tanong ito, takot kaya si Jesus mamatay? I don't think so. But Jesus knew that at this moment, His mission on earth is not yet finished. Ikaw, tanungin kita, kapatid. Sino sa inyo dito? Type Amen, type Yes in the comment section. Kung gusto niyo pumunta sa langit. Tas ang kamay. Sino gusto pumunta sa langit? Ayan. Sino gusto mapunta na ngayon? <laughs> biro lang, biro lang. Para, pero, kidding aside, ganun din naman sana sa atin. Sana wag tayong matakot sa kamatayan. Kasi, truth be told, it will all happen to us. Huwag tayong matakot mamatay. Because at the end of the day, our destination is our Father. We will be with our Father in heaven. Pero ito lang. Huwag naman sana masyadong magmadali. Bakit? Kasi kung buhay ka pa, kung buhay pa tayo, isa lang ibig sabihin nun, meron pang mission ang Diyos na pinagagawa sa atin. Because our mission as human beings, again, is not just to go to heaven. Our mission is to create heaven on earth. Para kahit wala pa tayo sa langit, maramdaman na natin na parang langit na dito sa lupa. And you see, my dear friends, that's our mission. There are so many hungry people to feed. Kaya wag muna kayo magmadali. There are so many sick people to heal. So many poor people to empower. So many broken people to love. And that's our mission. While we are still alive, we should be healers of broken people. Amen? Now, let's continue. We see now Matthew, he then quotes the prophet Isaiah when he talked about Jesus. Anong sabi dito? Sabi niya, 
This fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Look at my servant whom I have chosen. Take note ha, ang ginamit na word doon, look at my servant. Sabihin nyo nga, servant I am. You see, let me give you a context uh, in this writing. Alam nyo, yung mga hudyo, I have mentioned this in the past, the Jews' idea of a Messiah was that of a powerful military leader. So ang naiimagine nilang tagapagligtas ng, ng bayan ng Israel is a king, hari, who will rule the land and save them from their enemies. Sino ba yung kalaban nila during that time? Their enemy are those people who are conquering them. And during Jesus' time, it was the Roman Empire. So ang naisip nila, ah siguro pag dumating yung Messiah, darating siya para military leader, malahari, who will rule over the earth. However, Matthew is saying, wait, kakaiba itong Messiah na ito. Because this Messiah will not come as a king. He will come as a servant. Because this Messiah came to, not to rule. He came not to rule. This Messiah came to serve. Ayan. I don't know about you, but I believe ang pinakamalapit na naiimagine natin when we encounter the word servant is maybe siguro yung house help natin. House helper sa bahay. Maid. And, and, but Isaiah was written, I want you to know this, the book of Isaiah was written 3,000 years ago when there were still slaves in this world. Uso pa yun nung araw. Alam nyo, yung mga, yung naiimagine natin pag sinabi yung servant is katumbas ng mga helper sa bahay. Ay hindi, malayong malayo. In fact, ang pagiging helper sa bahay, marangal na trabaho yan. In fact, ang trato pa nga natin sa mga helper natin is parang kapamilya na natin sila. Pero, alam nyo, sa panahon ni Jesus, a servant is not simply a job tulad ng pagiging helper. A servant is equal to a slave. Yan ang estado nila sa buhay. Sa Tagalog ng slave, alila, alipin. And that was the message of Matthew. He was telling us that, hey, this Messiah came not to rule, but to be a slave. Grabe, no? Slave talaga, pinakamababa klaseng tao. And you see, the side-by-side -side painting, ayan, natin na yan. Balik tayo sa side-by-side -side painting and comparison and contrast sa Pharisees at kay Jesus. You see, while the Pharisees were afraid of losing their positions of power, kaya nga sila threatened kay Jesus eh. In fact, they were even willing to kill Jesus. And alam nyo, while the Pharisees was, were afraid of losing their positions of power, Si Jesus sa kabilang banda, he was willing to give up all his power. He was a servant. He was he came to be a slave. And you see my dear friends, us followers of Jesus, we are being called to be slaves too, to be servants as well. I don't know about you, pero uh, many years ago, there was this term for leadership that's what that was coined, yung yung salitang servant leader, di ba? Ang ganda, di ba? Servant leader. Ang ganda, di ba? Pero, alam nyo, ang ganda nung layunin eh. It, it aims for all leaders to become servants. But, here's my hot take on this. Ako naniniwala ko, there should never be a term such as servant leader. Alam nyo kung bakit? Because I believe the essence of leadership is service. You cannot be called a leader without being a servant. Kaya, sa akin, pag sinabi mong leader, dapat assume na yung pagiging servant. Because you cannot be a leader if you are not a servant. And here's what I'd like to remind you today. I don't know about you, maybe you're, you are holding many positions in your company. Siguro meron kang, author, you are an authority figure in your ministry, in your jobs, or at home. But I'd like to remind you of this. We are temporary leaders. And we are, but we are also permanent slaves of Jesus. Ayan. We are temporary le leaders. Darating ang panahon, yan mga titles natin, CEO, boss, manager, supervisor, team leader, ministry head, feast builder, preacher. Lahat yung mga positions na yan, lahat yung mga title na yan, they will all go away. However, our heart should be that of service because we are always being called to serve the Lord. In fact, alam nyo dito sa feast, that's what we are trying to do. 
ang mga servants dito, ang mga leaders dito, our joy, our greatest joy is not to rise up to leadership. Hindi yung tumaas yung rango, yung position, no. In fact, si Brother Bo, siya ang nasa top leader natin. A few years ago, he stepped down as the overall leader of Light of Jesus. And our greatest joy here at the feast is to serve without a title. Kaya nga ako, bilib na bilib ako sa mga servants natin dito sa feast. Alam nyo ba, karanihan sa mga servants natin dito sa feast, our top leaders, uh, yung mga servants natin dito sa feast, some of them, they are top leaders in their offices. Manager, boss, CEO, owner, uh, ano ako, matataas na tao. But here at the feast, they humbly serve in the ministries. Yung iba, greeter, yung iba, tagabilang ng pera, sa finance, yung iba, uh, intercessors, nandun sa likod, hindi sumasampa sa stage, yung iba, tagaayos ng upuan, matataas na tao, may mga posisyon. Because that's our joy, to serve without a title, to become a leader without a title. Amen? And that's the, the kind of Jesus that we are also serving. Now, let's continue. The next two lines are so beautiful. Again, Matthew quoted Isaiah. Anong sabi dito? He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. Ayan. Nakita ninyo, pansin ninyo si Jesus. Si Jesus, iniipit na siya ng mga Pharisees. But you know how did Jesus handle it? Jesus left the area avoiding a confrontation. Kabaligtaran sila, again, nung mga Pariseo who didn't only want to fight, they wanted to slaughter and kill Jesus. Diba? That's why I love the next statement from Isaiah. Anong sabi ni Isaiah? He, sabi rin ni Matthew, kinote niya si Isaiah, sabi dito, He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. Again, emphasis on weakest reed and flickering candle. Finally, He will cause justice to be victorious and His name will be the hope of all the world. You see, let me give you the proper understanding of this. Yung word na read, ano ba yung read? Reeds are usually used for walking sticks o kaya poles. Ayan. So, kailangan matiba yan. So, ibig sabihin, kung yung read eh, mahina, if the read is weak, for them, it was useless. Kaya, ang, anong gagawin nila? Kapag ka mahina yung read, nababali ka agad. Tatapon lang nila. Walang, walang silbi. Ganun din yung flickering candle. Alam nyo, nung unang panahon, ang ginagamit bilang kandila is a strip of cloth. Tapos, yung strip of cloth na yon yun ang ginagamit na wick, yung mitya ng kandila. However, if the strip of cloth was actually burnt out, it will also be useless. And therefore, kapag useless na yon burnt out na, itatapon na yan. However, Matthew and Isaiah is telling us this. The Messiah does not do that. Kapag ka yung reed, eh mapuputol, nababali, yung flickering candle, eh pwede nang itapon, ay, kay Jesus, yung Messiah na ito, hindi nyo itatapon yan. Because for Jesus, both the weak reed and the flickering candle actually represent broken humanity. It represents the sinner, the sick, the poor, the weak, the rejected. In other words, Matthew was simply saying that the Messiah loves broken people. So, maybe the Lord's message for you right now is this. Minsan feeling mo patapon ka. Feeling mo walang kwenta. Feeling mo pangit. Feeling mo ang dumi mo. Feeling mo wala kang pakinabang. Wait, 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 wait. Huwag mo masyadong i-down ang sarili mo. Kasi yung kinukonsider ng mundo na patapon, walang kwenta, pangit, marumi, walang pakinabang. Yan ang gustong gustong mahalin ng Diyos. And that was what Jesus was doing every single day until today. Now, you can see that the two-sided painting is complete. Again, the Pharisees on the one hand and Jesus on the other side. Because Jesus had the ministry of compassion, but the Pharisees had the ministry of condemnation. Yung bata nga patapon para sa pariseyo, kailangan itapon. Pero yung mga patapon, yan ang minamahal ni Jesus. A ministry of compassion. Now let me ask you this question. How about you? What kind of ministry do you have? Do you put people down? 
or do you lift people up? Or are you preoccupied showing people how different you are from others saying, huh, kami lang ang maliligtas, kami lang ang mababait, kami lang ang magagaling, kayo, masasama kayo. Are you preoccupied with that? Or are you preoccupied showing people that, hey, we're all the same. You're broken, patapon ka, pangit ka, feeling mo, ang dumi mo, nagkakasala ka, hey, we're all the same. We are all broken. That's why we need the Savior. That's why we need Jesus. What kind of ministry do you have? You see, the Pharisees hated broken people. They condemned them. But Jesus loved them. And He calls you to love them too. Again, God loves broken people. Amen? Now, let's continue the story. Kasi ito, mas gumaganda yung story. In our Bible story, Jesus meets a very broken person. Anong sabi dito? Matthew 12, 22 to 24. Sabi dito, Then, a demon-possessed man who was blind and could not speak was brought to Jesus. At tingnan nyo, tatlo yung problema niya. Bulag, hindi makapagsalita, at higit sa lahat, naposes pa ng demonyo. I mean, how could you be more broken than that? However, the beautiful thing about it is this. Jesus loved him. Because Matthew said in the next line, sabi dito, He healed the man so that he couldn't, sorry, He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, Could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? Nakita niyo yun? Sobrang pagmamahal ni Jesus, ginamot niya yung super broken na tao na yun. You see, the Messiah loves broken people. However, after that, the ordinary folk, the people who had no power to maintain, they responded in the right way. Sila yung mga common na tao. Anong ginawa nila? They knew that they were broken and needed a healer. Anong sabi nila? Uy, could this be the Messiah? Bakit? Kasi alam nila they are broken too. Katulad nung tao na yun. So they are actually responding in a positive way, in the right way. However, ito na maganda. There was a second reaction. Di ba kung ikaw nakita mo yun, ginamot ni Jesus, bulag, hindi makapagsalita, possessed pa, ikaw ma-amaze ka rin, grabe, ang galing nito, ang ba dito sundan natin siya. That was the right reaction. Pero tingnan nyo ito. There was actually a second reaction. This time, again, from the Pharisees, from the religious leaders, yung mga leader na merong power na gustong i-maintain. And you know what's their reaction? It was the total opposite. Anong sabi dito? Matthew 12, 24 says, But when the Pharisees heard about the miracle, they said, Hmm, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan. The Prince of Demons. Ayan. Nakita niyo yun. See, same Jesus, but different response. Uulitin ko. Same Jesus, but different response. Ginamot niya yung super broken, bulag, hindi makapagsalita, demon possessed na tao. However, dalawa yung naging reaksyon. And here's what I believe in, my dear friends. In, in fact, until now, it still happens. I've always believed in this universal truth. You see what you want to see. Ulitin ko ha. You see what you want to see. Anong ibig ko sabihin nito? Ang nakikita mo ay yung gusto mo lang makita. So, kahit na anong buti ng tao, kung ang nakikita mo yung kasamaan niya, ang makikita mo talaga masama yung tao. And... And there's nothing wrong with that person. Maybe there's wrong with your perception. Let me ask you this question, ha? Taas ang kamay kung nangyari na sa inyo ito. Type yes if this happened to you. Have you been judged unfairly? Nahusgahan ka na ba ng mga tao? Yung sinabi mata, ay, yan, oh, talagang masungit yan. Ay, yan, laging galit yan. Ay, yan, madamot yan. Ay, yan, ako, ingitero yan. Have you been judged unfairly? I have many times. But I'd like to tell you this, that if you have been judged unfairly, remember this. How a person reacts to an object tells more about the person reacting than the object he's reacting to. Ulitin ko ah. How a person reacts to an object tells more about the person reacting than the object he is reacting to. 
So, ibig sabihin, kung merong na-trigger sa sinabi mo, merong, kung merong na-offend sa sinabi mo, merong, merong na-judge sa sinabi mo, maybe there's nothing wrong with you. Maybe, again, ha, maybe there's nothing wrong with you. But maybe there's something wrong with the person reacting. Am I, am I making sense here? Bigyan ko kayo ng example. Ha. Alam nyo, um, since social media started, um, ito, meron tayong term na tinatawag na flex. Sabihin nyo nga flex. Alam nyo ba yung you're flexing on social media? Yung pinapakita mo kung ano yung mga achievements mo, kung ano yung mga nabili mo, etc. Et yung flex culture. Alam nyo, I have a huge problem with flex culture. And before you before you judge me on this and say me oo nga oh say that oo nga brother problema talaga yan ang dami nagfo-flex sa social media pause your judgments and comments for a while ito ang problem ng flex culture di ba ang flex culture ganito bago sapatos mo post ka bago jowa mo post ka di ba bago cellphone mo post ka bago kotse post ka bagong engage ka post ka Bagong baby, post ka. Bagong motor mo, <clears throat> ayan, popost ka. Sino ba yung preacher na yan, nagpopost pa ng bagong motor niya? Siguro Belden Lim pangalan nun. But anyway, killing aside, pa, y- meron kang something na bago, ipopost mo. And you are, quote-unquote, flexing it on social media. And here's what happens, when you post it on social media, merong dalawang reaksyon na makukuha. Number one ito, pag meron kang pinost, anong sasabihin sa'yo? Wow! Congrats! Happy for you! Ang saya ng mga tao para sa'yo. Pero merong pangalawang klase ng tao na kapag nag-post ka ng something sa social media mo, nag-flex ka, quote-unquote, eto na. Ang reaction nila, hmm, una sa lahat, merong iba nila-like nila. Merong iba, hindi nila ilalike. Pero at the back of their minds, anong sasabi nila? Hmm? Pa-post-post pa? Yabang naman nito? Hmm? Grabe, yabang naman ito. Siguro, inutang naman niya yan. Meron na judgment. Pero alam nyo, let me tell you honestly, I used to think that way. And then, one day, I talked to a friend of mine, I talked to a friend of mine na mahilig mag-flex sa social media. Lahat ng konting kibot post sa social media. Bagong cellphone, post sa social media. Bagong jowa, post sa social media. Nung na-engage, post sa social media. Nung nagka-baby, post sa social media. Ngayon, araw-araw, laman ng feed niya, puro baby. Y- y- yung ganyan. Yung, ay, nako. Lagi siya nag-reflex. And then, nung nakakwentuhan ko siya, nasabi ko sa kanya, sabi ko sa kanya, pre, pansin ko lang, pa- paano yung post mo sa social media, lahat ng mangyayari sa'yo? Tapos, Ano, artista ka ba? <laughs> sabi ko sa kanya. Ano, influencer ka ba? Ganyan. Tapos, ito lang sabi niya sa akin. Bro, sabi niya, sana maintindihan mo ako, sabi niya. Kasi alam mo, galing ako sa mahirap na pamilya. Kaya, yung konting makabili ako ng cellphone dahil pinaghirapan ko sa trabaho ko, sa negosyo ko, malaking achievement na sa akin yun. Kaya pinupost ko. Tapos, nung nagkaroon ako ng kotse, ay, naku, pangarap ko yun. Ay, malaking bagay sa akin yun. Kaya, pinupost ko. Masaya-masaya lang talaga ako. Tapos ito, ngayon, pansin mo yung social media ko, punong-puno ng family pictures, punong-puno ng picture ng anak ko. Sabi, alam mo kung bakit? Kasi nung bata ako, wala kaming picture ng nanay at tatay ko. Bukod sa wala kaming pambili ng camera at ng film, alam mo, yung tatay ko kasi iniwang kami. Kaya ngayon, Every opportunity I get, I post it on social media. Dati nun, hindi kami makapag-travel. Eh, wala eh. Ang travel ko lang, maglalakad ako papunta sa palengke. <laughs> Ngayon, nakakapag-travel na kami. Kaya pinupost ko sa social media. Tapos sabi sa akin nito, hindi ko naman pinupost yun, bro, para makapagyabang. I'm just really, really, genuinely happy about those moments in my life because I didn't get the chance to experience them before. At alam nyo, nung sinabi niya yun, Alam mo, para akong binuhusan ng malamig na tubig. And it got me thinking. Oo nga, no? Bakit ba tuwing nagpo-post ang mga tao? Ang assumption palagi, oy nag-reflex, oy nag Hindi pa pwedeng masaya lang talaga. And you see, my dear friends, minsan kasi, wala naman talagang problema sa post at nag-post. Ang may problema ay nandun sa tumitingin. Kasi baka may inggit sa puso. Kasi baka may mali siya sa utak at may mapanghusgang mata. Kaya nga sabi nila, kapag inggit, pumikit. ba? Diba? Again, let me ask you this question. Have you been judged unfairly? 
here's my suggestion. Suriin mo ang puso mo. Ha? May katotohanan ba sa sinasabi nila? Kung meron, edi baguhin mo. Ay, kung, kung talagang sinasabi mo, yabang naman ito, flex ng flex sa social media. Eh, kung talagang ang, ang intensyon mo magyabang, aba, suriin mo rin puso mo. Eh, bakit ka nga ba nag-post para magyabang, di ba? Baka hindi mo kailangan na i-post yan. Pero ito, kung wala naman talagang intensyon magyabang, eh, deadmahin mo na lang. If you have been judged unfairly, deadmahin mo na lang. Bakit? Huwag mo nang subukang i-defend ang sarili mo. Why? Kasi sayang lang ang oras mo. You cannot win your bashers and your haters over. Kasi tandaan nyo ito ha, you can quote me on this. Kasi sa mga taong ayaw sa'yo, no explanation is enough. Pero sa mga taong tunay na nagmamahal sa'yo, no explanation is needed. Amen? Type amen if you believe in that, if you agree with me on that. Amen? If you have been judged unfairly, dead ba lang? You cannot win them over. You don't need to explain and defend yourself. Amen? However, ito ha, speaking of being judged, ito, ito ang mas mahalaga ha, ito ang mas mahalaga. Sabi ko kanina, yes, you may have been judged unfairly, but here's what's more, most important. Have you judged other people unfairly too? Ayan. Ako, meron akong i-co-confess sa inyo ha. Sa atin, sa atin lang to. Total, konti lang naman tayo nanonood dito. Mga 200 lang naman kayo nanonood. ba Alam nyo? Honestly ha, means, yan ang pinaka, hanggang ngayon, dyan ako hirap. Yung magbigay ng judgment, mang, mangusga. Ito ha, shout out dito ha. Type, mag, mag say yes if you are a K-drama fan. Paki-type po sa comment section, K-drama fan, uh, nanonood kayo ng Korean novela, whatever, type lahat sa lahat ng mga K-pop, K- K-pop fanatics dyan, lahat ng K-drama addicts, mag-unite. Sige, mag-type kayo, magpakita kayo, lumabas kayo ngayon sa social media, dyan sa comment section. Ayan, let me burst your bubble, ha? Let me be honest with you, ha? Uh, alam nyo, ako, sa totoo lang, sa totoo lang, ha? Sorry, but I judge you, K-drama fans. Sorry po, pero yung hinusgahan ko kayo talaga. Bakit? Ako kasi hindi ako mahilig manood ng K-drama. And ako, ang iniisip ko, itong mga K-drama addicts na ito, ha? Ganito ko hinusgahan, ha? Ang thought bubble ko ito, tingnan mo itong mga K-drama fans na ito. Nag-aksa yan ng oras at araw. Pinahihirapan lang sarili, manunood ka ng movie, tapos sabay, hindi ka naman manunood kasi magbabasa ka lang naman ng subtitles. Ano kaya yun? Yun ang thought bubble ko. And for so long, yun ang inisip ko. Kaya ayoko na nanonood ng K-drama kasi ayoko mag- mag- magbasa ng subtitle. However, however, last week, inumpisan ko manood ng Lupin. Na wala. <laughs> na hindi ko rin maintindihan. Paano ko naintindihan? Subtitle. At alam niyo, pinanood ko yung Lupin, na-addict ako. Inistrate ko yung five episodes. And then, <laughs> idea, sabi ko, tingnan mo to si Belden. Nanonood ng Lupin. Parang timang, nagbabasa ng subtitles. And you see, now I get you. And I said sorry to the Lord. Lord, sorry for I judge my K-drama friends. May k- mga K-drama fans ko na mga kaibigan. Pero yung pala, maaadik din pala ako sa mga, sa mga movie, sa mga series na merong subtitles. So sorry po, peace po tayo lahat. Mahal ko pa rin naman kayo. Ginudge ko lang naman kayo ng konti. Pero ngayon, alam ko, ginudge nyo ako ngayon. Ayan, ikaw, brother, ginudge mo kami. Ayan, buti nga sa'yo. Ginudge ka rin namin ngayon. <laughs> but enough of that. Enough of that, my dear friends. What's my point? Have you judged others unfairly? Eh, ganyan tayo eh. Ang lakas natin mag-amen. Oh, amen, amen, brother! Don't judge me! Pero kadalasan, mahilig din pala tayo mangusga. Kaya wag sana tayong gumaya dun sa mga Pharisees. Ano ba nangyari sa kanila? After Jesus loved the poor, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and served the needy, yung mga Pharisees may gana pang mga akusa kay Jesus na ano, Uy, he is conniving with Satan. Ayan. Di ba't napaka-illogical nun? How illogical is that? But you know what, brothers and sisters? That's what pride and insecurity does with our thinking. It makes us think and act crazy. Because, and I want you to know this, pride and insecurity are actually two sides of the same coin. You cannot have one without the other. Kaya tayo may pride kasi sa totoo lang, nai-insecure tayo. 
And these religious leaders, these Pharisees who were so insecure, they saw Jesus as a threat to their esteemed position in society. Kaya nga gusto nilang patayin si Jesus. And you know what happened? They succeeded. They killed Jesus. They crucified Jesus. Pero ito ang nakakaalarma ha. Alam nyo? These Pharisees, these guys, were serving God, yet they ended up killing God. Kapatid, are you easily offended and triggered? Are you insecure? Here's what I would like you to do. Look for the poison of pride in your soul. And here's a warning. Please look for that pride. Why? Because pride will destroy you and it will destroy the people around you. Get rid of insecurity. Get rid of pride. How? Here's my answer. But let me share to you the answer through this last story. One day, merong isang mama. Merong isang mama, and sobrang yaman niya. Andun siya sa kanyang, andun siya sa kanyang village. Siya yung pinakamayaman dun sa village. And all these years, yung mga tao sa paligid niya, mga kapitbahay niya, nakakaaway niya. So, nakakabangga niya, so, nakakainisa niya, hanggang sa dumating yung punto, yung mga kapitbahay niya galit na sa kanya at galit din siya sa mga kapitbahay niya. And then, one day, biglang bumagyo ng sobrang-sobrang lakas. At habang doon sa bagyo na sobrang lakas na yon, alam nyo, unti-unting umaakyat at bumabaha. Umaakyat yung tubig sa kanilang village. Meron mga bahay na nalulubog, kapitbahay niya nalulubog na. Nung medyo mababa pa lang yung baha, nasa tuhod pa lang, merong dumaan na isang malaking-malaking truck nung kapitbahay nila. So, sabi nung mga kapitbahay oh, sa lahat ng mga gustong, gustong sumakay, pwede nang sumabay sa amin. And so, yung isang kapitbahay niya, dinaanan siya. Sabi sa kanya, Sir, baka gusto niyo nang sumabay sa amin. Eh, baka abutin po kayo ng baha. Ngayon itong mama nito sabi niya, Hindi na. Di bale. Okay lang ako. My Lord will save me. Si Lord ang bahala sa akin. So dasal lang siya, Lord, please save me. Please save me. Pero ang totoo nun, kaya ayaw niyang, ayaw niyang sumakay dun sa truck. Kasi sabi niyo, baka kung ano isipin nila sa akin, humihingi akong tulong sa kanya. May pride. Ayan. A few moments after, tumaas na yung baha. Ito na. Yung baha, lampas tao na. Ngayon itong mama na ito, nandun na siya sa second floor niya. Nung may, meron siya isang kapitbahay, may malaking bangka. Tapos, tumutulong yung kapitbahay niya ng mga taong nasa lanta. So, dumaan sa harap ng bahay niya. Sabi niya, Sir, baka gusto niyo pong sumakay na dito sa boat. Baka malunod po kayo dyan. Ang sabi ngayon nito mama, No, thank you. It's okay. My Lord will save me. Pero alam niyo, ang totoo nun, ayaw niya sumampa dun sa bangko. Kasi, may pride pa rin. Ayaw niya humingi ng tulong. And so, eto na, umuulan pa rin, malakas. Nung sobrang lakas na ng ulan, nandun na siya sa second floor. Actually, lampas na ng second floor. Alam nyo, nasa bubong na. Nasa bubong na yung baha. So, umakit siya dun sa tuktok ng kanyang bubong. Tapos, maya maya, yung isa niyang kapitbahay, meron daladalang helicopter. Sabi niya, Sir, ibababa, ibababa ko yung hagdan. Umakit na kayo dito para maka-evacuate na kayo. Alam mo, sabi nitong mama na ito, sabi niya, it's okay. My Lord will save me. And you know what happened? After a few minutes, nagtasali siya ng dasal hanggang sa nalubog siya at namatay. Nalunod sa baha. pag niya ngayon sa langit, eto na, umakit siya. Swerte niya, nakaabot pa siya ng langit. Ha? Pagdating doon sa langit, sabi niya kay San Pedro. Sabi niya kay Lord, Jesus, bakit ganun? Dasal ako ng dasal na you save me. Padalan mo ako ng tulong na, na, na patigilin mo yung baha. Pero hindi mo naman ako sinave. Hindi mo ako ni-rescue. How dare you? Akala ko ba mahal mo ako? Sabi ni Lord sa kanya, Anong hindi kita sinave? Tatlong beses kita sinubukang isave. Una, yung truck nung kapitbahay mo. Pangalawa, yung bangka nung kapitbahay mo. At pangatlo, higit sa lahat, yung helicopter. Yun na yung last option. E, ikaw ang umayaw eh. Ayaw mo. Kasi ang pride-pride mo. punong-puno ng pride ang puso mo. You see, my dear friends, I believe in this. Minsan, kaya tayo nasasaktan, kaya tayo napapahamak, 
Kasi ayaw natin humingi ng tulong. Ayaw natin humingi ng tulong sa Diyos. Ayaw natin humingi ng tulong sa iba. Bakit? Kasi, hindi, kaya ko to. Kaya ko to. Yan. But let me tell you this. I believe, when you have pride, you are actually bound to fall. And see, my dear friends, we are talking about brokenness and insecurity. And I believe in this. The best way to battle pride and insecurity is to admit your brokenness. Admit na, okay, nalulunod na, okay, tumataas yung baha, kailangan ko ng tulong. Acknowledge your insecurities. Confess your sins. And when you do that, I want you to find your security in God's love. Aminin mo na hindi mo kaya mag-isa. Admit that you need saving. Admit that you need a savior. Kasi alam nyo, ang Diyos, gustong gusto tayong salbahin. Gustong gusto tayong iligtas. Gustong gusto tayong tagalin sa kasalanan natin. Gustong gusto tayong tagalin dun sa kung sa kinalalagyan natin. But sometimes, it's our pride that is getting in the way. Gusto tayong salbahin ng Diyos. Gusto tayong iligtas ng Diyos. Pero ayaw natin magpaligtas. Bakit? We insist on our own way. Kapatid, maybe you need saving right now. Maybe you are broken right now. Maybe you are weak right now. Maybe you are in pain right now. Maybe you are suffering right now and you need a Savior. Let me tell you this. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to admit that, Hey, Lord, hindi ko na kaya. It's okay to say to your friend, hindi ko na kaya, tulungan mo ko. It's okay to ask for help. Put down your pride. Why? Because in your vulnerability, in your admission that you need help, there the Lord comes in and He is more than willing to pull you out of troubled waters. Why? You just have to admit that you are broken, that you are weak. Remember this, God loves broken people. And if you are broken, I mean it mo lang, Lord, I'm broken. I cannot do this on my own. Please save me. And I know He will be there to save you. Amen.